The Laz. And there she goes on Clyde Rocks, the best rock and sport for Glasgow in the West. Good morning. I'm Gavin Pearson. Thank you for waking up with us. And perhaps you're waking up after a great night last night at the SSE Hydro. Were you part of the 10,000 crowd that were loving Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds? And what's more, before he took to the stage, we got to go backstage. I was here to see Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds here tonight at the Hydro. Uh, I'll tell you about the gig. I just feel as if he's an absolute master. Oh, his songs are the best, but listen up. Best song? Every one of them, mate. He's my hero. This is Clyde Rocks. We are backstage at the SSE Hydro and we welcome back to, to Glasgow. So I, I guess this must be a home from home for you, Noel Gallagher. Uh, welcome back. Thank you very much. You're on stage tonight in a big venue like this. And What's it like for you, having experienced every venue that's in Glasgow, and how do you like the bigger venues? It's great. This particular venue is it's better than the SEC, I think. I've done two gigs here now, and uh, the first one I did was one of the first it was in the first week of this world tour it was an incredible night um, and they seemed to have uh, captured some kind of atmosphere in it it's great it was like it was like a small gig that was just expanded into like 10,000 people it was really really great and um, I do like it if we went out the back door here five minute walk up the road we could be at King Tut's how would you feel if, if you walked in there where it all began I've been back a couple of times I guess it'd be interesting, mildly interesting. Yeah, I wouldn't start crying or anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? I would... Uh, it's funny to think. I mean, I drove past it today, and it's funny to think that that's where it all started, you know, from that night uh, 24 years ago or whenever it was. Um, what do you remember about him? I remember McGee um, marching up to me and offering me a record deal, and I remember kind of... I remember the gig because I've seen footage of the gig because... Bizarrely enough, there were two Japanese people there filming it. Uh, so I remember, I remember the gig a little bit. It was, it, wasn't, it was very sparsely attended. There wasn't many people there. It was a very, very, very uneventful night, apart from McGee offering us the record deal that you know changed everyone's lives. And how pleased are you, considering that venues, that, you know, through the years have, have been rebranded and shut down? How exciting is it to know that somewhere like that it still exists and, and is still strong? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, the little venues of which King Tut's, I suppose, is a little venue, they're, they're always going to be all right. What kind of worries me a little bit is there's, there's, is there's a little venue like King Tut's and then there's a big venue like the Hydro, and there doesn't seem to be anything in between. All the in-between venues have been shut down now, and, um, or they seem to be being shut down. And um, it's a bit, it's, yeah, I don't know, the music scene is... It's kind of in a state of freefall. No one knows where it's going to end, you know. But, I mean, I guess as long as people still keep writing songs and making records, it'll be all right. But it's certainly not as much fun as it was, that's for sure. Um, in terms of fun, I mean, writing songs, talked about it there, um, how has that experience for you evolved through the years? Are there different processes now, or is it, is it easier, no, is it harder? No, no, the process is the same. Just hang on a second. Phil, tell Steph to uh, put my dinner on. Oh, right. <laughs> The process has not changed. You know, you get periods where you feel like everything that you're writing is amazing. Then you get weeks and months where you can't do anything, you know. The trick for me is do as much as you can when, you, when, when, it, when, it, when it's on and then don't chase it when it's not around, you know. So, I don't know. That's it, really. And when you go to record the song, how do you, how do you build it? What, what usually comes first? Um, I've developed an, uh, a... a uh, a formula down the years, I suppose, because I'm pretty much in the studio on my own. And I'll just put it down with an acoustic guitar first, no singing, then I'll put a vocal on top of it, and then we listen to it for a bit. And once the bass and drums are on, get the vocal on. Once the vocal is finished, then you're on to a winner. I don't know, it just depends what the song requires, do you know what I mean? Like some of the songs on this new record that I've done, like Riverman and Mighty Eye, are kind of quite expansive sounding so they kind of took they took a bit more thought some of the songs come really quick you know it's like it's like some songs that you write you can write in 10 minutes you know and some take four years you know same, same in the studio you can start a song at one in the afternoon and by five it can be done if all the stars are aligned then you can you know I've had right trouble with songs down the years that I've took me four years to record it just depends it's art, darling. No, Gallagher's a total legend. Just looking at all at the man, you just, you just, it gets better every time. The best bit of the concert was probably Don't Look Back in Anger. It's like a fine, a fine whiskey. It's better with age. We were all just up singing, just dancing everywhere. You spoke about uh, footage. Somebody was there recording that night at King Tut's. Uh, of course, nowadays, technology allows us to see footage from back in the day. 
How much do you go into YouTube, onto social media, and look back at some of the performances you've had, big and small? Never. Never look at anything. Never listen back to anything. You're only ever going to be disappointed. If you come off stage, if I was to come off stage here tonight and have done, in my mind, the greatest gig I think I'd ever done, and you watch it back on YouTube and it's coming out of a speaker that big, you're only going to be disappointed. So if I come off stage and I, have a, I've, I've, I feel like I've had a gig, I don't need that reaffirming by watching it on YouTube. But in the sense if I come off stage and I think it's the best thing that I've ever done, I don't need that reaffirming. I've got it in... But it's in me that it was great, and that's it. I live in the moment, and that's it. I don't. I mean, I'm forced to look back on it from time to time when I to do um, like making this Oasis documentary. It's supposed to, you've got to, you've got to um, okay footage. But I put a DVD out four years ago of me live at the old I never watched it before it came out. I refused. I've, someone else watched it. I just don't. It doesn't do me any favors. Are you, are you overcritical? Then are you harden yourself? Do you think? No, no, no. I don't think so. I just don't see the point in it. I see the point in watching yourself on telly. You've done it. You know, what do you want to watch it again for? My band sometimes watch it. I don't know, it's a personal thing, I suppose. One of the things I was looking forward to talking to you about tonight is, is football. Mm. It's been an eventful few days here in, in Glasgow. Yeah, yeah most saying. definitely. First of all, uh, your connection. I know you're, you've been at the old firm games in the mm. past. Um, did you manage to watch the game on Sunday that 100 million people watched around the world? I didn't. I was in, uh, I can't remember what, what day is it today? Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> Thursday, Sunday. I was somewhere in Europe. I don't know where I was. Amsterdam. You don't remember much once you've been to Amsterdam. I heard the scores coming through, and I thought, "Good Lord, what's happened there? Unbelievable!" Apparently, one of our city loan players missed a bit of a sitter, didn't he? Yeah, Boyata didn't have a, a good game. He was well, he, uh, he was pulled off. Actually, oh yes, you're talking about Patrick Roberts. Yeah, yeah he missed an own is he goal. Really good though. Patrick Roberts has um, been compared loosely to Messi in the early days, which is perhaps a little bit unfair in him, but he, ha- he does have similarities. He checking in from the right, looks right. pretty, you know, dropping the shoulder. Uh, right. have, have you seen much of him? I haven't seen him at all. We've had a lot of money for him. So you would think that somebody somewhere is, is going to uh, hang their hat on him at the club. Um, Guardiola coming in, I suppose, maybe, I don't know. Is I think that there's definitely potential. There's a lot of excitement about him. Maybe he's still a young lad. How old is he? Like, he's, what, he's is he 19? Right, okay. Yeah, I feel, I feel bad for kids, lads like that, that get these big moves. And 19, do you know what I mean? It ne- you know, you never really, they never really go on to greatness, do they? There is a, a vacant uh, job at Celtic Park come uh, the end of the season. Oh, You'll have heard about Ronnie Dyla moving up. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, yeah. My tour finishes in September. The season will be just started. I could do it. Easy. Parachute me in. Piece of football well, management. Well, I tell you what, the fans would be up for it because you have an affinity with Celtic, and that's one of the things that Celtic fans are, are insistent on. Um, but who do you think using your knowledge, we'd, we'd go in there and do a job. Well, I mean, I've been in the papers today, Neil Lennon maybe, David Moyes would be good. I don't know, it depends on the candidates, doesn't it? And I was quite surprised, the manager they've got now, I'd never heard of him before he came, I was quite surprised at that. But, I mean, I don't know. Neil Lennon and David Moyes are two pretty... Uh, Lennon's thrown his part in the ring, hasn't he? Yeah, we were speaking to him yesterday and he's, he's, he's up for it. Suppose if anybody knows how to run the club... Well, run Celtic it's him and, and now with Rangers coming back into it and all that and the, the, politi- the football politics of Scotland and Glasgow I suppose he's the man yeah well, Moyes or him would be great I suppose and, and how excited are you at the prospect of four old firm clashes next, next year that we may see you attending indeed yeah yeah it's going to be great it's, going to, it's about time and all it's, I mean I know a lot of my pals who are Celtic fans I think Rangers should be banned from all of football but um, for us living down south, you know, we like to see the old firm games. But um, I'm looking forward to them, yeah. This is Clyde Rocks, the best rock and sport across Glasgow and the West. Friday morning. Hello, I'm Gavin Pearson. Just played you Catfish and the Bottle Men and Soundcheck. It was actually around the time he was sound checking last night that we spoke to Noel Gallagher before he and the High Flying Birds were on stage at the SSE Hydro. And my chat with him continues right now. We're talking about his beloved Manchester City backstage at a massive flag outside his dressing room for the club. And I asked him how optimistic he was about the incoming manager, Pep Guardiola. Very. You know, the, the press down south are, are, are trying to pour cold water on it by saying, oh, it's going to be his biggest challenge and this and the other. It's no more of a challenge than it was for Mancini or, or uh, what's his name, Pellegrini. No, no more of a challenge than them. And he's a better coach and he'll be able to attract better players. And we've got there's money coming in now. And so I'm looking forward to watching his press conferences and... Could do with a few more birds at the city matches. He'll bring him in because he's a good-looking guy, and he 
too many geezers at football. I was here to see Noel Gallagher tonight. Oh, it was great, it was good. Lock all the doors, what a tune. Plenty of Oasis numbers and bit of his own stuff, so yeah, it was good. Oh, it's a great buzz. I think he, I think he enjoys himself. You can, you can tell he kind of thrives on the, the, the crowd here. So. He knows how to play the crowd. He knows everybody loves him. In terms of uh, Leicester this season, and obviously you're going to be disappointed that, that City aren't title challengers at the moment, but uh, at the same time, how are you feeling about this magical season that Leicester have had? I'm not interested. I'm not interested. If we don't win it, it shouldn't be presented to anyone. But you'd prefer it maybe to go there than, no. than United, perhaps? Oh, God, f- no, yeah, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't want United to win anything. I'd rather, uh, to be, between the two, to be honest, I'd rather Tottenham win, if I'm being honest. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. It's been a long time, I suppose. They've waited a long time. They've yeah, I mean, I mean, saying that, it's over. I mean, Leicester are going to win it. They've won it about four weeks ago. There's no way they'll stop them now, but... I could put the two, the Tottenham, the Tottenham lads, they seem like pretty good lads, do you know what I mean? And um, I think they'd be worthy champions. I mean, that Leicester team's going to break up at the end of this season. You know, they are, and next season they might get relegated. So, I mean, it'll be a bit of a flash in the pan, you would have thought, you know. So, um, I think that's but, sad in a way, though. Well, that's the way it is, you know what I mean? If you're, if you're, if you're Mares, for instance, at Leicester, and you're on 40 grand a week or whatever he's on, and he wins the league and they say to him, well, if you sign another five-year contract, we'll give you 90 grand a week. And then somebody says, ah, yeah, but Chelsea will give you 190 grand a week. What are you going to do? You know what I mean? You've got 10 years at the top in football. A player who could break his leg at any point is going to go for the money, and rightly so. You know, why wouldn't he? I'd sign a five-year contract with Chelsea for 190 grand a week myself. More than I earn. <laughs> you can take the pay cut, surely. Um, I don't think so. And one more uh, little chat about football here. Euro 2016. I, I remember talking to you around the World Cup, I think it was 2002, and you, you had a huge contempt for the England national team. Does that still exist? I, um, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I, I, find them, uh, I find the whole circus surrounding it annoying. You know, that when they beat Germany in a friendly, the world beaters, and, you know... We all know Germany will win that trophy and England will be lucky to get to the quarterfinals. But I'm not an England fan. I do. Um, it'd be great. I mean, if England won anything, it would be truly staggering. But, um, you know, I'm not... Because I'm not... I don't consider myself to be English. I mean, I wasn't, my parents are Irish, you know what I mean? I'm, There's a bit of Scottish in you, isn't there? Uh, no. <laughs> not, not, not bloodline, yeah, but, but you, you feel it, don't you? I, well, my wife's Scottish and uh, my children are got Scottish in them so yeah but um, and by the same way I don't kind of feel 100% Irish either because I was born in England so I don't re- inter- internationally I don't really support anyone you know what I mean but um, I would if England were playing Scotland tomorrow I'd be supporting Scotland if Ireland were playing England I'd be supporting uh, Ireland uh, same for Wales you know but um, I mean I've been to England matches and it's always a good laugh and all that but I don't like Wayne Rooney and most of the United players have coloured my judgement over England down the years I know it's a sorry thing, it's a petty, but that's just the way it is, that's why I am. Well, good luck to, to Joe Hart and the City players who are involved. Joe is a legend, and if anybody deserves a medal, it would be him and Raheem, and, um, but the rest of them, right off as far as I'm concerned. What is your connection? What do you love about Glasgow, particularly? Uh, the spirit of the people, really. I mean, I've always had good nights here. When I was a roadie with Inspiral Carpets in the 80s, we'd come and you'd always look forward to the Barrowlands. I, uh, and then with Oasis at the Barrowlands and all the great gigs lot low. all the great gigs we ever done up here and this, the King Tut's thing being signed and all that and got a lot of Scottish friends got a Scottish wife you know there's just um, I don't know there's just I don't know Mancunians and Glaswegians are not that different you know the accent is different but we're not that different first Oasis gig I went to was at Barrowland where um, sadly Liam departed and you took over do you remember that? 94 it would have been Christmas yeah well if that wasn't a sign of things to come <laughs> Yeah, I remember it well. Yeah. yeah, it was fantastic. I remember it was magical. Well, it was fantastic for me. No, but we enjoyed the fact that you came on and, and did a little bit for us. It was good. Yeah, well, they, I think that's. Yeah, I think that might have been the first time I ever did that. So it's kind of ironic, isn't it? <laughs> we should talk about the future. Um, you you're, seem to be racing through the material and getting it out there. A, a third album you talked about there. Tell us more about it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm halfway through it. Um, um, I've written seven songs and recorded five. It's going all right. It's going pretty good. Yeah, I'm enjoying doing it. I've been trying to do it in the downtime from these for this tour. So hopefully, I'm, if I can get it finished by the end of this year, I'd be I'd be pretty pleased to get it out kind of sometime next year. But I'm not going to rush it. I'm gonna finish it when it's when it's when it's ready. And it sounds pretty good. You know, some people are saying you know 
It's the most recent thing I've ever done. Once you finish the tour, how are you going to relax? What, what are the plans? Um, I finish in September. What am I going to do? I'll probably take the rest. I will, well, take. I won't do any gigs now until well into 2017. I would have thought this is Oasis films coming out. I'll probably have to get involved in some of the promo on that. Uh, I would have to go and send to my wife, who will need uh, uh, a bit of TLC because she's not seen me for a while. How are you feeling about this Oasis film? The idea was to mark the 20th anniversary of Nebworth, because we filmed then, it was never shown, because uh, we went on to do other things. Um, how am I feeling about it? I wouldn't have done the 20 hours of interviews if I wasn't feeling good about it. I think it's a good story. You know, if you think about the, on the day that I signed off the dole to walking out on stage at Nebworth, it was only three and a bit years. It's pretty meteoric. And all the madness that goes with that. and It's all wrapped up in the times and the 90s and supermodels and this, that and the other. You know, It's all good. That'll be well worth uh, watching. Looking forward to that. As uh, we're looking forward to tonight as well. Noel, thank you very much for taking time before you go on stage to, to talk to us on, on Clyde Rocks. And, uh, we'll see you again soon. Look forward to the album. Indeed you will. Thank you very much. <laughs>